Hello and welcome to CDI's Torque Training video series. CDI understands the critical nature of the job that you do, so please work safely. Always wear safety glasses when using any tool, and always read your owner's manual completely before using your torque instrument. Today's video covers the proper use of CDI's CompuTorque SG wrenches. The CDI CompuTorque SG is a very accurate digital torque and angle wrench that's well suited for most critical torque applications. A broad selection of drive sizes and torque ranges are available from CDI. Battery installation. To begin using your CompuTorque SG torque wrench, first install the batteries. The battery cap has reverse left-hand threads. To remove the battery cap, turn clockwise. Install the three included AA batteries into the wrench positive end first. Then replace the battery cap, turning counterclockwise. When the batteries are installed, the wrench will start automatically, the handle will vibrate, the LEDs will light, and the buzzer will sound. This is a self-test feature that will occur whenever batteries are changed. You'll be prompted to set the date time. Use the arrow buttons to set. Press Enter to move over. The time is in 24-hour format. Press Enter to return to the torque screen. Once the batteries are installed, a battery level indicator is visible in the upper left corner of the screen. Replacement batteries may be of any type, including rechargeable batteries. Quick Use Torque Mode If the wrench was powered down in the angle mode, the wrench will have to be set down to zero tear the angle function. Set the units of torque by momentarily pressing the U button. The units of torque may be foot-pounds, inch-pounds, newton-meter, and kilogram-meter. Your wrench may have different torque units depending on the size of the wrench. Now adjust to the desired torque value by using the up or down arrow buttons. For this demonstration, we'll set the wrench to 35 foot-pounds of torque. Pressing and holding either button will speed the adjustment. Now it's ready to use. Grip the tool in the center of the handle and pull slowly and steadily until you see the yellow LEDs light in succession. Slow down and when the two green LEDs light, stop. Should you exceed the target torque, the red LEDs will light. Then you may switch the ratchet lever to reverse and loosen the fastener. Apply torque again, being careful to stop when the green LEDs light. You'll also feel vibration, hear the buzzer, and see the torque value on the screen. Whenever a target torque or target angle is achieved, the wrench automatically stores the torque or angle value, and if the clock has been set, records the date and time that it was collected. The wrench will store and display up to 1500 torque and or angle values. When the memory is full, MF will appear in the lower left-hand corner of the screen. The wrench has a finite buffer, which means when the memory is full, it will no longer record new data. Quick Use Angle Mode If you want the wrench to display both angle and torque, you must select the unit of torque first. Select Angle Mode by pressing the Enter button until the angle mode is displayed. Use the up or down buttons to select the desired angle value. For this demonstration, we're going to use 90 degrees of angle rotation. The wrench is now ready to use an angle mode. Apply angle in a smooth, steady pull. Do not jerk the wrench. The angle function performs best when the tool is turned at a rate of 6 seconds per 180 degrees of rotation. Moving too fast will display angle error. Grip the tool in the center of the handle and pull slowly and steadily until you see the yellow LEDs light in succession. Slow down, and when the two green LEDs light, stop. Setting a torque preset. Your CDI CompuTorque SG will store up to 50 presets. The presets may be for torque or angle. To set a torque preset, select the torque page. Press the U button to select the desired units of torque. Then push and hold the U button for three seconds. The wrench will prompt you, add preset. Use the up arrow button to highlight yes, then push enter. Now enter the target torque. For this demonstration, we'll use 50 foot-pounds of torque. Now the wrench will prompt you to enter the minimum torque value. For this demonstration, we'll use 48 foot-pounds of torque as the minimum. Next, press Enter, and the wrench will prompt you to enter the maximum torque value. We'll use 52 foot-pounds as the maximum. 
Now press the Enter button, and it will prompt you for a batch count. The batch count is the number of fasteners you'll be torquing in a sequence. This is an optional feature. Just push the Enter button to bypass. For this example, we'll set the batch count to 10 by pushing the up arrow button. Now we have set up PSET01, which stands for preset number one. You can see the value 10 in the upper right hand corner, which is showing the batch count or the number of fasteners being torqued. As the torque is applied, the batch count will count down to zero and then start over. On some models, pressing the up or down buttons will allow you to scroll through the presets in either direction. On other models, press Enter to scroll to the right. Pressing Enter will take you back to the main measurement home screen. Setting an Angle Preset Angle presets are set much in the same way as torque presets. If you want the wrench to display both angle and torque, you must select the unit of torque first. Press the Enter button to display the angle page. Now push and hold the U button for 3 seconds until you're prompted, Add Preset. Use the up arrow button to highlight yes and push the enter button. For this demonstration, we're going to use 50 degrees of angle rotation. Now select the target angle of 50 degrees, then press enter and you'll be prompted to enter the minimum angle value. Enter the value using the up or down buttons. We'll set the minimum angle at 45 degrees. Now press enter. Now you'll be prompted to select the maximum angle. By default, the maximum value is plus 4% of the target torque or angle value. We'll set the maximum angle to 55 degrees. Hit enter again to set the batch count. We'll set it to 10 as before and then push enter. Now you've set up another preset, but this time in the angle mode. You may scroll from the two presets to the main measurement home screen by pressing enter. You may edit or delete any preset at any time you wish. Just select the preset you'd like to edit or delete. Hold the U button for three seconds, make your changes and hit enter. When a preset is deleted, it does not affect the numbering order of the other stored presets. Main menu. To access the main menu, push and hold the enter button for three seconds. The first option is language. Press enter and make your selection. After the language is selected, the user will be prompted to select a comma or a point as the separator. Press Enter to escape. Next, scroll down to Head Length. This is used when an adapter is added to the wrench. To determine the proper head length, first, measure the distance from the center of the square drive to the center of the fastener using a precision ruler. If the adapter head is applied at a 45-degree angle, the measurement must be taken at a 90-degree angle to the torque wrench. If the adapter is applied at a 90-degree angle, no adjustment in the torque wrench value is required. If the units of torque are in foot-pounds or inch-pounds, the head length will be displayed in inches. If the torque units are in newton-meter or deciNewton-meter, then the head length will be expressed in millimeters. You may push the U button to switch between inches and millimeters. Use the up arrow button to set the head length. Then push the enter button to move to the next digit depending on the version. Push the enter button to accept it and then scroll back up to exit and press enter once again. Now you'll see the words offset in use displayed on the screen. This tells you that the wrench will automatically adjust for the adapter length. This offset in use will be displayed until the head length is set back to zero. To remove the offset in use mode, return to the main menu, select head length and reset the length value to zero. You can do this quickly by depressing both the up and down buttons simultaneously. Hit enter to escape. Now we'll cover the show data, clear data, and cycle count functions. To access the menu, push and hold the enter button for three seconds. Now scroll down to show data and push enter. The number on the top is the time at which the value was collected. Right below that is the date the value was collected. The third line is the actual torque. If an angle has been stored, it'll be displayed on the fourth line. These values may be scrolled through by pushing the up or down arrows. To exit, push the enter button once again. Now to clear that data, highlight the words clear data in the main menu and hit enter. Now hit the up arrow to select yes and then push the enter button once again. And that's it, all data is cleared. Now we'll take a look at the cycle count feature. Go back to the main menu, highlight cycle count and push the enter button. The cycle count shows you the number of times the wrench has been used either for torque or angle. To clear the cycle count, go up to clear and push the enter button. 
Push Enter to escape. Settings menu. To access the settings menu, press and hold the Enter button for three seconds. Then scroll down to highlight settings. Press Enter. The first item on the settings menu is Show Info. Press the Enter button to display the info page. The first item is the serial number, followed by Cal, which stands for the date that the wrench was last calibrated. The third item is ISD. This is the in-service date, which is the date when the wrench clock was first set and put into service. The balance of the information is for factory use only. Now press Enter to escape this menu. The next item down is Sleep Time. Press the up or down buttons to adjust the sleep time. Simply adjust to your preference and press the Enter button to accept. Now we come to LCD Contrast. You may adjust this to your own personal preference. The factory default is 40. Press the Enter button to escape. The next item down is Key Beep. This refers to the beeping sound the buttons make when they're depressed. Disabling this feature does not stop the wrench from beeping when the target torque or angle value has been reached. Highlight your desired option and press Enter. Now we have Auto Backlight. Enabling this feature means that the torque wrench backlight will light whenever the tool is being used. This is great for use in low light areas. Simply highlight your choice and press the Enter button. Now we have the Toggle Backlight. Enabling this option allows you to control the backlight by depressing the light button in the lower right-hand corner. When enabled, pressing the light button turns the backlight on and pressing it again turns it off. When disabled, pressing the light button turns the backlight on and it turns off automatically six seconds after the last button is pressed. Highlight your selection and press the Enter button. Next is Vibration Configuration. By default, the torque wrench handle will vibrate when the target torque or target angle has been reached. You may disable this feature by using the Up button to change to Off and pressing the Enter button. Now use the down arrow to highlight Exit and press the Enter button to exit the Settings menu. OK, now we'll take a look at the Configure menu. To access the Configure menu, press and hold the Enter button for three seconds, then scroll down to highlight Configure and press the Enter button. The first item on the menu is Mode Setup. The first item is TQ minus percent setup. Highlighting this and pressing Enter allows you to adjust the negative tolerance of the target torque. The factory default setting is zero. Set to your desired tolerance and press Enter. Scroll down to TQ plus percent setup. Highlight and press Enter to adjust the positive torque tolerance. Factory default is four. Change to your desired tolerance and press Enter to set. Next is Angle Tolerance. The first item is Angle Minus Percent Setup. Highlighting this and pressing Enter allows you to adjust the negative tolerance of the target angle. The factory default setting is zero. Set to your desired tolerance and press Enter. Scroll down to Angle Plus Percent Setup. Highlight and press Enter to adjust the positive angle tolerance. Factory default is four. Change to your desired tolerance and press Enter to set. The next item down is Then Disabled. Pressing the Enter button allows you to select between enabling or disabling the Torque Then Angle feature. The Torque Then Angle feature is an optional feature that allows you to apply torque and then the wrench will automatically switch to the angle mode. This would be used in an instance where you wanted to apply torque and then immediately apply angle to the same fastener. Use the up arrow button to highlight your desired setting. Press Enter to escape. The next item down is And Disabled. Pressing the Enter button allows you to select between enabling or disabling the Torque and Angle feature. The Torque and Angle feature is an optional feature that allows you to apply torque while recording the angle simultaneously. The angle torque and the target angle must be reached for the data to be stored. This would be used in an instance where you wanted to apply torque and at the same time determine what angle is being applied to the fastener. Use the up arrow button to highlight exit and then press the enter button to escape. The next item is preset lock. Highlighting and entering the password results in all presets being locked in their current settings. In this mode, the user may switch between presets but does not have access to the main torque or angle screens. Enter the password and select Lock or Unlock. The next item is Delete Presets. Highlighting gives you the option of deleting all presets. 
The next item is Job Mode. Highlighting and entering the password allows you to enable or disable the job mode. The job mode links all of the presets into a chain and locks out the main torque and angle screens. The preset jobs must be completed in the sequence they are entered. The next item is Calibration. This is used to calibrate the torque wrench. This function is password protected and is only accessible to qualified torque technicians. The next item down is Set Date Time. Use the arrow buttons to set. Press Enter to move over. The time is in 24-hour format. Press Enter to return to the torque screen. Now we come to Set Calibration Interval. Press the Enter button to adjust the calibration interval. This is the period of time you wish to be reminded to have the wrench recalibrated. This feature does not prevent the wrench from operating. It's only a calibration reminder. Highlight Exit and press the Enter button to escape. Now we come to Change Password. Refer to the operation manual for the factory passcode. Enter those numbers and press the Enter key. Then enter your new passcode and press the Enter key again to confirm. To download data from the CompuTorque SG, plug in the included USB cable. Downloading is the same as using a flash drive. Just plug it in and the contents of the wrench are displayed on your computer. The CSV file will open in Excel. The wrench will store up to 1500 torque or angle values. Once the capacity of the wrench is reached, an MF or memory full icon will appear on the screen. New data will not be stored until the memory is deleted or downloaded. The stored data may be viewed on the wrench or downloaded to your PC. You can delete the files from the wrench or delete them from the PC. Storage and Calibration When storing your CompuTorque SG, it is not necessary to remove the batteries from the unit. Make sure the unit is powered down and store on the box along with the manual and the certification. CDI recommends that the unit be recalibrated at least once a year. Please contact your CDI representative for the address of the nearest CDI repair facility. Thank you for watching. This has been a presentation of CDI.